Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about beam elements in ANSYS library. When it comes to beam elements, you have multiple choices. And we usually categorize them based on 2D beam elements or 3D beam elements. But remember, beam, it's beam element itself is a 1D element, which means that the degree of freedom depends only in one direction. Let's say the degree of freedom at our node is new, the deflection is only function of x. It only depends on where we are at our beam. So when we are referring to 2D beam or 3D beam elements, we are referring to the degrees of freedom that each node can have. So a 2D beam element, each node can have a degree of freedom of u, nu, and theta. So you should remember that the beam elements that are referred in ANSYS are actually frame elements. So in addition to the deflection and the slope, they can have extension as well, which is the characteristics of bar element. So technically they are frame element, but they are referred to as uh, beam element. And for case of 3D beam elements, we have six degrees of freedom. Extension, deflection in Y, deflection in Z, and the corresponding angle for each case. Which element you use depends on your application. It depends on what degree of freedom you're interested in, whether your element includes material nonlinearity, such as plasticity, creep, or whether it includes geometry nonlinearity, or whether you want to use Euler Bernoulli or Timoshenko beam theory. So, in case of 2D, you have the choice of beam 3, 23, and 54. All of them are based on three degrees of freedom at each node. That means that six degrees of freedom in total. Beam three is the simplest one, so it's the most computationally efficient. Beam 23 can consider material nonlinearity, and beam 54 allows for unsymmetric geometry, if you have tapered geometry. For the case of 3D, beam four is an equivalent of beam three in in 3D, you just have six degrees of freedom at each node and in total six uh, degrees of freedom per element. Beam 44 is an equivalent of beam 54 in, in 2D. It has six degrees of freedom and for used for unsymmetric geometry. Beam 24, equivalent of beam 23, used for material nonlinearity. Beam 188 and beam 189 are a little bit different than other beam elements because they are based on Timoshenko beam theory. If you remember, we said that Timoshenko allows for deflection based on shear loads. So the deflection not only is function of the coupled moment, but also the shear force. So if your beam is uh, stubby, means short and fat, then you have to use Timoshenko beam theory and the corresponding element that you have to use are beam 188 and beam 189. Both of them are 3D, so six degrees of freedom. They allow for the seventh degree of freedom is that warping of cross-section. So the cross-section is not perpendicular to the uh, central axis. The difference between the two is that beam 189 has three nodes. So it's a three node beam. And each node has six degrees of freedom. So there are 18 degrees of freedom. And if you count that warping, uh, that would be 24 for each case. Uh, so beam 189 is the most complete element, beam element in ANSYS. And it's not as computationally efficient as other beam elements because it includes material nonlinearity, geometry nonlinearity, and is based on beam, Timoshenko beam theory. But steel is much better than solid elements or plane elements. Steel, if you can get away with using beam elements rather than solid elements, that's what you should do.